I'm Jen Mellon and welcome to Come Home. Today uh, is going to be such a great day. We have an interesting setup today. I'm doing something that I don't ordinarily do. I'm doing a Zoom interview with executive producer of The Blind, Bob Katz. He and his wife, Jamie, live in New Orleans. And he was an accountant and uh, just living his life for the Lord. He had a track, he had a career, when all of a sudden, as is the case, many times God interrupted his life and asked him to start working in the arts and entertainment, the film industry. He produced God's Not Dead, one, two, and three, The Case for Christ, many others. He's worked as an investor for directing investors for Pure Flix, which is something we enjoy as believers. But he has a project coming out this week, and you get to hear the behind the scenes. How many of you love Duck Dynasty? I'm an all-boy mom, so that was the show that I used to allow my boys to watch. It was clean, it was moral, but you know, behind every story, there's a backstory. Sometimes we see the cleaned up version, the, the shiny version, the after Jesus version. Well, this family struggled and they had some demons that they had to slay. They needed a Jesus Christ intervention. And this movie is done so well. And so we're going to talk to the executive producer, but I encourage all of you, go to theblindmovie.com, get your tickets. We definitely want to show up in record numbers on opening day, and we want to support Christian film and arts and entertainment. This is how the gospel message goes out, and it's such a joy to be able to join Bob and hear about this upcoming movie. I, Phil Robertson. I, Kay Carraway. Promise to love. And be with you forever. forever. You can do just about anything you set your mind to, Phil Robertson. <laughs> but it's the drink. He becomes the devil, size. We're fine. I don't think we are. Get out. this work I wanted to work. I don't know what to say, Pastor Smith. You got to die, and then you need to be born again. trailer, that sizzle reel is so phenomenal. You can just feel the power in the presence of God. And I love testimony stories. I love seeing God just intervene in lives and completely transform them. And we have a special treat. As I said earlier, we have the executive producer of The Blind with us today. So I would like to welcome you, Bob. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Jennifer. It's a pleasure. Well, it's been fun chit-chatting with you prior to us, you know, starting this interview. And I am so intrigued by your life story. Uh, it Clearly, you did not uh, dream about uh, producing movies and getting these very important messages um, out to the masses. And God, I guess, came in and, and changed everything. But kind of share with us about your childhood, your life, the career path you were on, the very successful career path, I might add, and then how God came in and said, hey, I got something else for you. Yeah, uh, it, it's it, it's interesting to me. I, I was born and raised Jewish, um, but somehow knew all along that um that, that that just wasn't the path that God had for me. And, and at a young age, you can't explain it. It's just, you know. And then when I, I was in the Marine Corps, went to Vietnam, came back and uh, was in grad school and started watching the 700 Club. And, uh, you know, in the IRA, I'll, I'll get to that. And I started watching it. And at first it was like, 
are these people crazy? Uh, but I, I, I was mesmerized. In fact, I started rearranging my grad school. Uh, when I'd register for the next semester, I'd rearrange it so I could make sure and watch Pat Robertson. And I'll, I'll segue to a quick story. I wrote a book about 20 years ago on uh, Christian financial planning. Then the book did really well. And Pat Robertson had me on the show. And then we wound up striking up a friendship. And uh, and for I was on a show for as the financial guy for several years, um, like once a month or something. And one day during a break, uh, we were, uh, and I, I said, Pat, I used to think you were crazy, but I couldn't stop watching you. And he laughed and he re reaches over and pats me on the knee. He says, they all start out that way. So we got, uh, you know, to, to be good friends, I, would, I became a Christian. I was a very devout Christian for 40 years, but I was a CPA and I had a a, part, a, a firm. I was a partner in the firm, um, minding my own business, very happy. And one day my partner now in the film business, we, we went to the same church, but it was a very big church, about 10,000 people. So I knew who he was. He knew I was, but we weren't friends. And he calls me up on Sunday and says, hey, I caught my son watching some stuff he really shouldn't have been watching late last night. And God told me that we need to make some faith-based movies that are actually good, that people want to see. And he told me that I need you to cross T's and dot I's for me. And it was like, what? And you know what you do as a Christian when you're trying to buy time. You say, well, let me pray about it. So I said, Troy, let, let me pray about it. And uh, I couldn't shake it. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking about it. So I called him back the next day. I said, Troy, do you know anything about making films? And he said, no, do you? And I said, no. Uh, he said, well, don't worry about it. You know, I know God told me to do it, so it'll all work out. So our very first film is God's Not Dead. So it's this major, major hit. Wow. And, um, you know, we're looking at each other thinking, well, this is easy. Why didn't everybody do this? You know, little did we know uh, what, what, what had just transpired. But we did see how it affected people. Wow. Um, we got literally emails from around the world that my, my son and daughter were lost and they mm -hmm. saw your film and they wanted, they, they came back to the church. You know, my, my daughter was about to commit suicide and, and saw the film. We, we got so hundreds and hundreds of emails on how this one film that sort of traversed the world and touched people that we just felt like, whoa, we we need to keep doing this, and so for the last ten years, uh, we've we've made you know we made uh, God's Not Dead two, and then God's Not Dead three, and we were involved in Do You Believe in Case for Christ, and then uh, in our early God's Not Dead movies, uh, the Robertson family did some cameos for us, so they contacted us a couple of years ago and said, look, we want to do a story about Phil the patriarch and Kay. Uh, would you all, we know a lot about TV production. We don't know anything about movie production. Would you all be interested in helping us? And, you know, that's what we've been doing for the last couple of years is working on this film, The Blind. Wow. What a story, Bob. That is amazing. It, it Yeah, it's amazing to me. I, I wake up each day and say, I have no idea. God, just tell me what to do. I, I'm not, I'm not going to fight you. What? Tell me what to do. Well, and I don't mean this to you. I'm saying from my personal life story and the Bible, it says that he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And sometimes he just takes the ones that have no clue what they're doing because then you're completely dependent on him. You, you know it's going to fail unless he helps. That That's it. I mean, we we laugh now. We didn't even know what we didn't know. Uh and every time we'd come up against the wall, you know, or uh, an obstacle, God would just intervene and overcome it. And when you're making a movie, you make you get a lot of obstacles normally. When you're making a faith based movie, you get a lot of demonic obstacles, right. just strange stuff. Uh, but but God, you know, just protected us and guided us and protected us from the things we didn't know where we really could have gotten taken advantage of. Uh, and he just made sure we weren't. And and it, 
It's been great. And, and working on this film has been just absolutely wonderful because the family is so wonderful. You know, everybody knows them from Duck Dynasty on TV. And they truly, that's truly how they are. What you see on TV is how they are. They're they are just phenomenal people. But what people don't know is the story that this movie tells is that early on, um, they went through an extremely difficult 10-year period. And Phil had a, a very difficult battle with, with alcoholism and Kay stood by him. And this is a, this, people think the movie uh, may be political or, or trying to make some, some statement. This is, this is a love story. This is a story, two things. It, it's a love story and, and standing together through all this difficulty, standing together in your marriage to prevail uh, and, it, and it's also a redemption story. Nobody, nobody's too far away from the love and the grace and the mercy of God to find redemption. And when you see Phil's story and where he was, you know, I, I'm praying a lot of people are going to say, wow, if, if he was there and he was redeemed, then there's hope for me. And that's why we make these movies. Well, Bob, I, I'm... I can't wait to see it. I'm a boy mom. And so my sons all watched Duck Dynasty. It was one of those programs. I didn't have to sit there and make sure, you know, that it was not going to be vulgar or profane or inappropriate. So that was something they knew they could turn Duck Dynasty on if I wasn't home to watch. And so many know of them and know of their story. But Human nature is we see the the cleaned up Jesus shiny version, and right. you know we don't know the price that people have paid, you know, to to have the costly oil they carry, and so this movie's going back and it's showing this is what life was pre Jesus, pre being born again, pre having an an amazing encounter with the Lord. Exactly, exactly, and it it's meant to be. Uh, a little gritty. I mean, I, I think people want to understand these people really struggled. There were real difficulties, just like I'm having. And yet they they stuck together. They prevailed. God intervened. And look, they, they now touch the world for Christ. You know, we got to, one of the things we really try and do is tell true stories so that people can relate to them. Yeah. Um, and 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 I think this is the most beautiful yeah. cinematography uh, in a movie that we've done. The acting is superb. The cinematography is just great. Uh, th this, you know, I, I, you think you fall in love with every movie, but I really think this this is our finest movie yet. It, it's really a beautiful movie, well shot. I think people will truly enjoy not only the story but just visually watching the the movie. Well, Bob, tell me this. Why did you all decide to name it The Blind? Well, it's got that that double entendre. You know, they're they're big duck hunters. Uh, shows Duck Dynasty. So they spend a lot of time in duck blinds. Uh, but until they came to Christ, they were blind. They couldn't see. So we're hoping people get, you know, the kind of double entendre uh, that, that we meant in, in the title. Well, it's I I believe it's going to be a box office smash, and I really encourage everyone that is watching this program today and listening, go out. You know, don't wait until it comes out on Netflix. Don't wait. You know, until uh, later on. The, the one of the most important things about uh, faith based films is you've got to go on opening weekend. You've got to go, you know, that first weekend, that first week that it's out, it, 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 it's a lot of mileage. Do you, Bob, can you explain why that's so important? Yeah. Um, and, and it is extraordinarily important. And let me just say, people are always saying to us, we need more movies like this. We need more movies like this. We need good faith based. Well, the biggest thing you can do to help the, the, that, and it's really a handful of faith-based uh, film producers across the country. The biggest thing you can do is show up on opening weekend because everything evolves from there. If we have a big opening weekend, then the theater chains will open up more theaters and they'll provide, instead of two showings a day, they might do four showings a day. Um, if we have 
uh, a big opening weekend and the streaming services take note and they'll they'll make sure it gets on all the streaming platforms so if we really are serious about bringing more faith-based films uh, to the world and and upping the quality each time we do it we've We've got to have that strong opening weekend because if not, people don't take notice and and then you sort of get, you know, you fade away. So it's just absolutely critical. Uh, opening weekend is everything for for the film industry. Well, I just want to encourage because some of you might go in, well, I've got a wedding. I've got a bar mitzvah. I've got, you know, a confirmation that we can. OK, we'll go buy tickets and bless somebody else with them. You know, rent out a theater, uh, take your home group, take your youth group, take your kids baseball team. You know, this this is such good seed to sow into. So it's not just that we want to show up and support it and get the, the finances generated. Most of all, we want to shout the good news. We want souls saved. We want to go into the highways and the byways. We want to take the arts and ten- entertainment mountain back from the enemy and his grip. And, you know, with the strike going on and everything going on, this is such a t- time that based, faith-based films can shine, right, Bob? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, in fact, we're it, it's one of those God things that with the strike going on, uh, independent filmmakers are allowed to continue making independent films. So they're able to get talent on both sides of the camera that perhaps they couldn't get before because of the strike. So we want to use this opportunity uh, to continue to keep upping the quality. We we want to make films, and I think when you see The Blind, you'll agree, this is as good as any secular film out there in terms of its quality, in terms of its acting, in terms of its storyline. You know, we are competing heads up now, but we need our community to get out there and support it and to bring somebody who's not safe to watch it and say, oh, wow, you know, I'm struggling with that, you know, Maybe there's something to all this. You know, I want to I want to know more. Can I go to church with you this Sunday? Something like that. But we need we need our our audience to get out there and support these films. And they can go to fathom.com right now, uh, the blind page on Fathom and, and order tickets right now. It's wonderful. Yes. And I encourage everyone, do it. Listen, give away presents and and be a blessing and and buy those tickets. Now um bob tell us some of the actors you've got like you've got a plus actors a list actors in this film well we do and it's an interesting story um uh without getting uh, this is not um, the film is not political the film is a love story it's a redemption story but we got a lot of pushback when we were casting from actors who were afraid that they would get blacklisted or stereotyped or, oh, we 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 had people signed and then they said, oh, their agent got to them and said, well, but you better not do this. It might be bad for your career. The, the lead actors, Aaron and, and, and uh, Amelia, are actually English. Wow. Uh, well known. Uh, you, you won't know. There's no English. Their American accents are better than ours. Um, but uh, we had to go to England to cast the leads for this film because everybody was terribly afraid that if they did a a a, a tense or or a dramatic faith based film in this country, they might hurt their career. So while we got superb actors, I mean uh, Amelia and Aaron are just just incredible. Um, it wasn't easy casting in faith based any faith-based film casting is always a problem because people are afraid and more more now than ever because they're afraid of getting uh, um i forget the term the kids use but but black the old term was blacklisted and now it's uh canceled now they're afraid of getting canceled if they do a faith-based film so we it's a struggle we need not only for people to show up we need their prayers amen you need intercessors. And I call forth the intercessors watching this program. I have lots of people that intercede. Put uh, Bob uh, and his team on your list. Put the actors and actresses and start praying over future films. Pray over Pure Flix. Pray over any organization um, and ministry that is trying uh, to turn the tide. And God's in it. 
Bob, I think he chose you because he knew, look, he he went to he 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 went to Vietnam. He's a Marine. He can he can stand the test of time. He's a tough guy. So he's not going to be deterred by all of these uh, seemingly challenging times. And so I'm so glad you didn't give up that you kept pushing through. Thank you. I think he chose me because of what you said earlier. Let me pick somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. So they'll listen to me uh, because we, we uh, like I said, my partner and I just laugh now when we when we look at God's not dead and what we didn't know, it's it's hilarious. It, it It's so God because we didn't know anything. So that and that's where we want to stay. You know, God, tell us what you want us to do. We'll do it. Period. Well, Bob, that, that the Lord loves that childlike faith, you know, that just that when we yield, when we surrender, when we're reliant on him, where we trust in him with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding, that's when he can do his greatest work. And I'm so glad that you've embraced that principle and and they're, you're enjoying it. You're laughing at it. You're saying, OK, here we go again. It, it, it. It always, the best part is when it's all done and you start to get those emails yeah. and you realize, wow, thank you, God. We're, we're, we're getting to touch lives for eternity. It's not just for some award, you know, in Hollywood. People are being saved. People's lives are changed. That, I don't want to get too mushy, but I, absolutely, that is the best part of all of this is to get those emails from people who saw the film and they were so deeply touched by it. Yeah. Well, if anyone, if you've just tuned in, if you're listening, I am with Bob Katz today. He's the executive producer of many faith-based films, but the one we're talking about today is called The Blind. It's coming out in theaters this week. It's vitally important that you go see it this week, buy tickets, uh, rent out the theater, pray over it. You can go to theblindmovie.com. You can also go to Fathom. Uh, and get your tickets on there as well. Uh, and listen, we want to make a loud and clear statement. You know, recently the Sound of Freedom came out and it did extraordinarily well. And that's because the body of Christ, the ecclesia mobilized and we showed up and we've got to keep doing that. Uh, we've got to keep showing up big for Jesus. And Bob, you and your team have done that through this extraordinary, uh, excellent uh, movie. And I know that only eternity will tell the beauty and the souls that are going to come from this endeavor. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you. Now, just before we end, because uh, we're right at the end. Now, God is, I'm uh, obviously, if you're in this industry, you learn how to collaborate and how to do work with kingdom minded people. And you actually in this film got an opportunity to collaborate with a with a household name store that is actually selling the tickets in kiosks in their store. Yeah, we we are very proud to, to be. This is cutting edge. This has never been done before. Uh, Walmart uh, wanted to start providing uh, package tickets for people. Uh, so this coming Monday. Uh, you will see in 12 or 1400 Walmart stores in their main aisle, a, a, a corner where it promotes the blind. And then underneath that, you can buy tickets to your local AMC theater at a discount. Uh, I think they're selling in packages of two and packages of five and they're discounted. Um, there is a AMC theater close to every Walmart that's doing this. So no problem using the tickets. And it's never been done before. This is uh, this is a new joint collaboration that Walmart uh, was kind enough to to kick off with us. Wow, that is unheard of. I've never seen it, and I'm in Walmart several times a week. So, and I love that they're not selling one ticket. The minimum you can get is two, because nobody should go to a faith based movie alone. Exactly. <laughs> so, give one to a yeah. home person you know give one to your enemy give one to your outlaws your in-laws just bring everybody yep yeah and and yeah and i you know this would this would be a wonderful way for us walmart's been extremely they were all going all the way back to our god's not dead days walmart's always been extremely supportive 
And of course, they have a very close relationship with the Robertson family. So this was just the next logical step. And we're all, you know, praying that it, it really does extremely well. I pray that it that from now on, all they do is support faith-based films and other projects that I'm sure you're already working on. But Bob, before we close, and I and I it's always hard to close when you're talking about something so interesting and, and filled with the spirit of God. But is are there any final words you'd like to say about the film or to those that are gonna watch it? Well, I, I just first let me thank the people that are gonna watch it. We can't do what we do without your support. Uh, and nowadays in this world, media is the way you reach the world, all the various forms of, of media. And film is so impactful, it, you know, film and streaming now is the way, if you're gonna bring the gospel message to a large group, it's gonna be through through the media, through streaming, through film. So, uh, you know, we, we need everybody's support if they're gonna, we're, we're here, we need more of these films, we need more of these films. Uh, we're here to make those films, uh, but we need you to get out there, you know, and, and buy the tickets and, and support us. Well, my audience, the come home audience, I know will. And um, I know that they're that the body of Christ, not only in the United States, but throughout the world, I, I really believe, Bob, this is going to be a global phenomenon because you're dealing with human issues that we all experience and life is messy. Christianity is messy, but God is all about overcoming by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And the blind is just highlighting the testimony of a very uh, dear and famous family. And so thank you for doing this project. I know that it was a labor of love and, and thank you for the projects you've done in the past and the ones that you'll do in the future. And I look forward to having you on uh, with more, with the other things that you're going to do in the future. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, and and I, let me, again, thank your audience. Uh, we can't do it without them. So God bless and uh, send me those emails. I love those stories. Okay. Well, if any of you want to reach out to Bob, you can just reach out to the station. We'll connect you. But the most important thing to do right now is go to theblindmovie.com, get your tickets, invite a friend, take your neighbors, your family, your church, uh, whatever, and just enjoy um, this wonderful film. So Bob, thanks again. And I so appreciate you being on Come Home today. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.